Hi guys, looks like um, a few people um, still need uh, a bit more advice on, on how to make graphs in Excel and what things like the slope and R squared means. So I'm going to try and make this video that will quickly show it. So I'm going to show it using our lab data from lab 3. Um, this is what you would use in your report. So the lab data looks like this. Uh, there's a temperature column, a mass column. Uh, and uh, here we have the mils of CO2 and the mass specific mils of CO2 um, before STP correction and these two columns are after STP correction. So the column we're actually interested in is column H here. Uh, and what we want to plot is temperature against mass specific volume of CO2 at STP. Um, and to do that in Excel, well there's a couple of ways, but the simplest way I find is just to highlight two columns next to each other. And when you do this, uh, you can go insert, um, move over to this charts area, and you want to insert one of these scatter plots. So pick this scatter plot here, and you can see at the moment it's um, plotted those two um, columns of data on my scatter plot um, uh, as it is. And right now it's it's tem it's temperature on the x-axis, and you can see. The, uh, which one is on the x-axis, because that's the purple box, and the y-axis is this blue box, um, and so I can see which data is being plotted. Now, I don't really want to plot mass against temperature. I want to plot this mass-specific VO2, and it's really quite easy to change um, which columns you are plotting in Excel. If I just left-click on my data, it brings up those boxes. If I was to click away, they disappear again, but I'm going to left-click on those boxes and now I can grab this box and move it across. Uh, you'll notice I can't grab the corner of the box because that would like try to get me to um, change the dimensions of the box. I have to grab the edge of the box where this uh, cursor changes into this four point arrow. So I'm going to grab the edge of that box and move it to that mass specific volume of CO2. And so now I've plotted temperature on the x-axis and uh, the mass specific VO2 on the Y axis. Uh, so it's looking pretty good. Um, I might, uh, uh, another way to do this would be to make uh, an empty plot. So I could just go insert uh, scatter plot and it brings up an empty plot. And then I can just go select data, add a series, and I can now add. Uh, uh, some X um, values here and some Y values here. And this might be useful if you wanted to plot things like um, grasshoppers and grubs as separate colors. Uh, we don't actually have to do that. Uh, so um, I'm going to plot everything, um, all the temperatures for um, both grasshoppers and grubs and all the mass specific volumes of CO2. It comes up here saying there was an error because Excel sometimes forgets um, that you have to delete that, that that first bit of the data that I uh, um, added in. So I've, I've just deleted that first section where it's tried to highlight the same area twice. So now if I go OK, it looks good. So I'm going to go OK again and I'm back here with um, my um, chart. So now there are some chart elements. And there's a couple of um, options. I can go access titles. And if I do that, um, I can now um, edit these access titles and make this temperature in degree C. And this, my uh, mass specific volume of CO2 at STP. And so now I know what I'm plotting. I don't really need a title, so I'm going to delete that. And I don't like these grid lines for whatever reason, so I'm just going to highlight them and delete them as well. Okay, so now I want to put a trend line on. Uh, my plot's looking pretty good. Uh, I can click those points, uh, and you can um, see uh, there is uh, some options um, that appear on this side. What I want is to right-click on that and add trend line. And that's going to bring up this trend line options here. And I'm going to check these two boxes. This um, display equation on chart, because that can be useful, and display the R squared on the chart. Okay, so 
for most of our assignments, that's as far as we need to do, but we also need to understand uh, what this, um, this chart um, actually, uh, what this uh, slope and R squared values actually mean. So there's two values we were interested in. In the very first lab, we were interested in this slope, the number before the X in this equation. Uh, we're not so interested in that uh, uh, for this particular lab uh, because we're not doing um, stuff like geometric scaling. What we are really interested in is this R squared value. And this tells us something fundamentally different. This is uh, a degree of how well this line fits the data. And uh, that can also tell us how well we can explain mass specific volume of carbon dioxide based on temperature alone. And if you remember from our geometric lab, uh, if we got an R squared of one, that was the highest it could be, we could explain 100% of uh, the variation in Y um, based on changes in X. Here our R squared value is 0.45, um, which means we can explain about 45% of the variation in the mass specific volume of CO2 at STP based on temperature alone. Now, in terms of, that might seem like that's not much, right? Um, but in terms of biological systems, that's pretty good. In fact, if we get anywhere over, say, 0.25 or 0.3, that's starting to get um, into a very significant um, amount of the variation. Because there's always going to be variation um, in data sets like this. These grubs are probably a bit more active than we would expect. These grubs are a bit more metabolically depressed than we would expect. Um, and so there's going to be other factors which affect uh, our measurement right now. But explaining about half of the variation with this one variable alone, that's pretty good. So I'd say this fit um, is not bad. This is a pretty good fit um, and we can explain a lot of the variation in the mass specific volume of CO2 using temperature from this plot.